Hey there, it's Kendra the Scattered Fashionista and today I'm going to walk you through how to make a wooden pen, pencil, whatever you want holder for your craft supplies. This was initiated based on a tutorial I saw on Pinterest and then saw again on Facebook a while later. I gave it a shot and I totally did not like it. It bombed, my pencils wouldn't stay in place, so I figured I'd already started the task, so I was going to figure out how to do it better. So I'm going to start here showing you a finished product and then walk you through how I created my second one. First of all, you want to start out with two wooden canvases. Now that means they're wood. They're just wood. They're hollow on the back side. I'll show you pictures of that in just a second. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a, a strong tape and tape them together and create sort of a book. And again, I'm gonna walk you through all those steps. Here, what I did is I spray painted this one with a bright silver, and then I'm in the process of painting some pictures on it. I've still got some chalk markings here to help me with my lettering. This one's not done, but it's more done than the one I'm gonna walk you through. I have it closed with Velcro here, and I will have links below to all the supplies where you can get them on Amazon, so that way you don't even have to leave your house unless you want to. I always like an excuse to run to Michael's. So I open it up and inside of here I have six pockets. The way I made this, you can you only need a few supplies. I have used paper, which is a stack of paper I got from Michael's once when it was on sale, just a bunch of different stuff. I found coordinating prints. So you can see here, just kind of went with what worked together. And so I have a spot for all my different pens and pencils. And then when I close it, everything stays separated and I can take it with me or I can leave it on the counter and just use this as a display item because this is my word for the year this year. All right, so let me put that away and I'm gonna show you the supplies. First of all, you need the wooden canvases. Again, links below for everything. You need some sort of paper. You can either buy a book of paper like this or you can go to Michael's or Joann's or your favorite craft store and just go through the stacks and pick out what you like. But you do want them to be pretty heavy duty. I wouldn't say cardstock because that's a little bit tough for folding. The next thing you need is a ruler, scissors, pen or pencil. I like both because I might want to color coat things. Glue stick, Velcro, scotch tape, a glue gun and glue sticks. That's pretty much it. If you want to create a pattern, you can also get some heavy duty, card, heavy duty cardboard just to create your pattern on there, but I'll walk you through how to do that. So pictured here is the original that I worked on. Maybe you've seen this video floating around Pinterest or wherever, but it didn't work for me. What you wanna to do to start out is take your two canvases, your wooden canvases, put them side by side so that the top and bottom line up and then you're gonna take your Gorilla Tape, and I have a link for that below, and you're gonna go almost top to bottom, just attaching the two pieces together. Smooth it out. Now, in my case, my Gorilla Tape was not wide enough, so I went back over that again, down the sides, just to give it extra strength. Gorilla Tape is super strong, but you wanna make sure that this is gonna hold up for a long time. I don't plan on remaking one of these for a while, for myself, so I want to make sure it lasts. Once you have added the tape to the inside, you're going to close your book, make sure it's nice and flat, even everything, and then you're going to add a stretch of tape to the outside of the book and smooth that down. After you've finished the tape on the outside, you want to open your book back up and check to make sure there's no exposed tape on the inside. In my case there was, so I took a little piece of tape on the top and bottom and just covered that up because I want, didn't want any dust or anything to get stuck to that. Next, I took it outside and I put a couple coats of spray paint on it, so I started with a white and then I added a chalk paint blue. And once that was dry, I sanded it down to give it kind of a shabby chic look. Your next step will be measuring to create the pattern for your pencil boxes. And I do have a pattern uploaded on the goodies set portion of the blog, which I will link to below. This will work for pretty much the exact size canvas, but I'll walk you through under that link how to adjust it to fit yours. So you create your pattern, 
then you will actually cut out your paper and at the very bottom there's a little place where you slice it. I added all these mark fold markings on just with a ruler and pen and I folded them to the outside first because it was simpler and then I could have a nice clean fold when I turned it back in. So we're folding them the opposite direction here because you want a really crisp clean fold when you're ready to start gluing and putting your box together. Once you've created all your folds outward, you're just gonna turn them back inward and smoothly press those folds down again for that crisp, clean line. For the inside, the inside paper, I went with just a 12 inch sheet right out of the stack and I measured to make it fit just inside those two first folds. It was a little bit narrower than four inches because you don't want it to cross over the fold. It will make it hard to make your box have that crisp corner. So once you do that, just add glue to that big square right there. Press the inside paper on and make sure it is straight. Make sure it lines up perfectly with the lines to the right and left of that. And here, there is a pattern right here at the top, but that doesn't matter because that's going to be on the inside where nobody will see it when we finish the box. Next, you fold and add the bottom fold in, again, going the opposite direction of what you're going to do just to make sure it's perfect. And then, we're gonna start by working with those two triangular corners, folding them up and attaching them to the bottom not the inside insert, but the actual piece they're attached to, because we're gonna hide that piece under there. This part is where it gets a little tricky, because you wanna make sure your, your folds are square, and you wanna make sure they're sturdy. And then after you've got those corners down, you put the lining in and fold that down and make it strong. And again, do your fold on the bottom, which is gonna be reversed to be the back of the box. Once you've done that, you're gonna take the outside edges of your front paper, put some glue on them, and again, I'm just using glue stick on this step because it's really strong, it's all you need. And then you're gonna fold those in like so and kind of jam your hand in there and smooth them out, make sure it's square and sturdy. And this is what you're going to do for all of your boxes. My case has six, I think that's a good number, and I think if you're working with an eight by 10, that's a great number. I did reinforce everything with scotch tape just for peace of mind. It probably didn't need it, but I like to do things way beyond what necessarily needs to be done. So after you've created your first box, you wanna do that, measure the inside, and then create the pattern for your inner box. This is where you're gonna to have to adjust the pattern on the website to fit the inner portion that you need. Now do go a teensy bit smaller than what you actually need because with all the folding, it's gonna be snug. You wanna give yourself just a little bit of leeway. And here you see, I've had that extra insert. Works on both sides. Your next step is to take your glue gun and begin attaching the row of boxes to each other. So you're gonna start with the inside of the first box and attach it to the middle box. Make sure it's nice and square and stuck together. And then you're gonna move on to the last box and glue that to it. So it's one solid unit ready to go into your pencil case. After you've glued together both sets of three, you're gonna then double check that it fits in your pencil case, the wooden canvas, and start adding glue to the sides, back, and top of the wood. Now you're not gonna go all the way to the top of your boxes necessarily because we'll be able to do that after we have gotten them securely in we'll finish the gluing at the top just to give you a little space to work with that. So make sure it's nice and sturdy, snug. You've got enough glue in there. Make sure it's not falling out. That's very important. And then I went back through and I just stuck the nose of my glue gun in there and added a little extra glue just because I love overdoing things to make sure they're okay. Then you can pull up the insides of your boxes, the back inserts, and just add a little glue there to make sure they're stuck. We are gonna make sure there's no way that any of this can rip up while you are enjoying using this case.
On this box, I used ribbon to cover up the seams between where the boxes are glued together. However, in my other box, I used washi tape. That works just as well, but because washi tape is removable, you still want to glue it down. I used a glue gun that seemed to work well for me. So you wanna measure your ribbon, make sure it fits, and then one by one, add that in. One benefit to using washi instead of ribbon is that it is really easy to just stick an X-Acto knife in there to trim and make sure your edges are super clean. So I like that about the washi tape. With the ribbon, you have to work a little bit more and be more precise in your original measurements. Once you've completed the ribbon for the first side, you're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the opposite side. Once you're done with that, you are ready to begin adding your Velcro. On my first box, I used two pieces of Velcro. I felt like that was a little bit of overkill, so here I'm only using one right in the center. This is sticky back Velcro, but I still felt like that I needed to use a glue gun. So I removed the sticky on the back, added glue, put it on the first side, and then to make sure it's even, you put the glue on, close the box, let it cool, and then you open it to make sure that the two pieces of Velcro line up perfectly, and they are strong and sturdy. And there you go, you've created your pen and pencil case. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you would like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much for joining me.